This is a cubic inch of sound. My name is Luke, and today we have with us a very special guest. Katie, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Katie Dagnan. I am a voice actress, and I voice Amber in Highway Blossoms. The best visual novel. True. <laughs> Arguably. The only one yeah. I played, but I really liked it. I Ever, everyone else, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, you just interrupted me. I am Kevin, and I am from this podcast. Uh, I'm Nick, and just like Kevin, I'm from this podcast. Um, I'm Will. I don't know if I'm from the podcast, but I do have a lot of data structures homework due tonight, so that's fun. <laughs> that's cool. Don't talk too much about it, because it might be against your school's academic integrity policy. Ah, uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is awkward, because normally when we start off, it's like, we just kind of awkwardly say, so, what did you guys think of that movie? But, uh, we're not really reviewing anything. So, Katie, how was your day? That's the first question on the list. <laughs> uh, it's been kind of uneventful, which is good, because usually I'm very busy. Um, this is actually one of the, the few days that I've able to um, take off and just kind of relax and lay in bed. <laughs> That's super nice. But it's back to work tomorrow, so I'm like, I better enjoy it while I can. All right, so your hours are like kind of crazy then yeah just because um balancing like a full-time job and then also doing uh voice work as well and then i'm like ah uh, should i get another job but part-time <laughs> mm. just for more income the world's crazy right now so it's like i don't really know what i'm doing <laughs> yeah true well, i don't so think anyone does students, it's just that's, part-time that's and also school work <laughs> so hopefully things work out <laughs> just adulting nobody knows like what they're doing yeah are you it's you allowed to talk to us about any projects any secret voice acting gigs <laughs> um usually voice acting gigs are nda so i can't really talk about them um but i actually have been kind of taking a break from uh voice work just because of the whole covid situation and i've only gotten back into it more recently like i did auditions yesterday for a project i can't talk about but huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> um that's really that's exciting to have stuff on the on the horizon yeah um and i think that i really just needed a break because last year i didn't take one whatsoever <laughs> and i'm like okay i really need to like rest and kind of slow down because i'm overwhelming myself yeah <laughs> that's fair it's, um, it's exciting to have secret projects. I'm like, eventually we'll find out what those projects were, hopefully. If true. If get cast. Mm. If not, there's always more. There's always more to audition for, more to do. Like, no sweat. You audition for something, and then you forget about it. <laughs> what would be your, your dream project to work on? Um... Honestly, I'd love to voice in an anime. Um, I feel like with COVID and everything, that's not really an option right now because a lot of the recording is being done from home with some studio work. Um, and also, like, just with the whole COVID situation, it's kind of hard to get your foot in that door. Mm. Um, mm. But that's something that I've been wanting to do for years. Not to say that like the the visual novels and online projects are bad like i love them just as much i'm just like i would love to do anime and yeah. as someone who watches yeah. dubbed Everybody anime there. the only person here who watches dubbed <laughs> anime i would appreciate seeing that or hearing it it does sound like a fun gig i gotta say yeah so uh now we're getting into the deep questions are we? Oh, I didn't know that we had deep questions. That's a that's a little. Bit I, I just scared. looked at the list. Ask and uh, have you been to any of the national parks? Um. Yes, I went to the Arches National Park. Um. When I actually moved down to Texas, um, I saw it was on the map, like on the way, and I was like, "Could we? Can we stop at Arches <laughs> Highway Blossom?" <laughs> Like, um, no joke, we honestly were thinking about just seeing the national parks, like, after playing this game. <laughs> there I mean, was, like, honestly, a legit plan. We were like, let's try and hit as many. Because we've always wanted to do, like, a road trip. And then we played this visual novel, and we're like, wait a minute. We have a list of 
the perfect places <laughs> to go to because it's going in the same direction. And it's like, yeah. this could be a thing. We could do yeah. the Highway Blossoms road trip. And we could all fall in love in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all going to fall in love like with each other? No, we have to find someone on the side of the road. Oh, I'm yeah. just gonna say Are we all going to fall in love with, with the one person? <laughs> <laughs> um, interestingly enough, the devs that made um, Highway Blossoms, they've done the Highway Blossoms road trip. That's so oh, that's Someone has done it. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, we, we, I, mean, we, we, <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if try- there is anyone else that has, because we found it. Somebody had planned out the whole trip. Like, somebody posted oh. it on, like, Reddit or something. <laughs> Yeah, the Highway oh, Blossoms so subreddit, and I saw that they posted, they had, like, a planner. I don't think they were actually intending on doing it. They just, like, made it for fun. They're like, oh, this is, like, a day-by-day schedule and, like, the path that they took. And I'm like, for a second, I was scared that they did it before us. But no, no, they were just planning it for us, like, and we were going to steal it. I didn't even, oops, I bumped the mic. Uh, I didn't even know there was a Highway Blossoms Reddit. I have something to look at later. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's it's too active, but it's it's fun. There's stuff There's on like there. There's like a couple bug reports and uh, a couple <laughs> people like fan art, which is pretty cool. No, that's super cute because I've seen uh, I've seen like a lot of fan art, and I've told people I'm like, if you want me to see something, like send it to me because things get lost. Because I love I love to see fan art, and like there's um there's fan fiction too <laughs> that I've seen, and I'm like, <sighs> have you read the fan fiction? I have. I've read some of them. Is as I don't. I don't know if we're. I don't know if we're allowed to advertise fan fiction on here. I don't see why we wouldn't. But um, is there any you'd recommend? <laughs> I mean, I know that I don't. It was a while ago that I read them, but I remember reading like a coffee shop AU one. It was super cute. <laughs> like no joke. I was actually looking at um the fanfic the other day because I was trying to see if there was one that takes place in between the DLC and the base game. There was one that like might have fit. Where, like, Amber goes and meets, like, Marina's family. But I don't know if that would take place in between or, like, after next exit. Like, clearly it's fan fiction and it could just not fit in anywhere. Like, <laughs> there's got to be something that happened in between. Kevin, Highway I can tell Legends. you're you're really invested in the lore here. Like, if, if this fan fiction I doesn't match Blossoms up with what number happened. number one but... fan, all right? Because, <laughs> I mean... I, yeah, we're, I was actually looking through the DLC also. And um, when they meet uh, Cassie, the... The girl from the candy shop uh they explain the entirety of the highway blossoms main story and then they go off into what happens in between but they cut away and i'm like something happened here that i'm missing and cassie's getting more of the story than me all right <laughs> i love how upset you are Beth. i love that you're legitimately <laughs> angry right now that we haven't gotten this story no joke you have to resort Be- to the best game i've played in 2020 well the most enjoyable all right I didn't Aww. enjoy many games in 2020 because I've been to school. <laughs> That's unfortunate. How yeah. many how many games did you play? Not not that I'm trying to knock Highway Blossoms here, but I, <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking. Uh, Highway Blossoms is one of them. That's all we need to know. That's fair. Nice. And <laughs> more uh, back like on the topic of hi- Highway jo- Blossoms lore. Um, uh, Katie, I'm curious how you personally enjoy eating s'mores, because that was a pretty big <laughs> plot point in the game. So I've gone camping um, since I was young, and it's been like a few years since I've gone. But um, like, even though I haven't gone physically camping in so long, I still make homemade s'mores. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, I was at the grocery store yesterday, and I saw like the stuff to make s'mores, and I was like, oh, should I get them? <laughs> Yeah, I, a, um, my roommates and I, we, we've we done similar stuff making s'mores over our ceramic induction stove. <laughs> it's cool. fun! Yeah, that actually is. segues good... into something, where, what are your thoughts on microwave s'mores? Mm, mm-hmm. That's a good one. No, yeah. it's not a good one. Don't act like that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone I... makes fun of me. Microwave s'mores are a good alternative, but I like setting the marshmallows on fire. Ooh. Um, so that the marshmallow's a little bit crispy. So Absolutely. I prefer over a campfire, but like if I don't have fire, then microwave. I 100% agree. I like setting them on fire. I feel like that's no. the best taste. But here's the thing. Um, I have another friend who says that it's either s'mores over a real fire or not at all. And I'm like... I have a microwave and I have s'mores stuff, but no fire. Should I just not have s'mores? 
microwaves make make them really fun because they get super puffy and um but and i'm just thinking if you have the option of using like a stovetop burner then Mm -hmm. you're gonna use that over the microwave right but i feel like you'd get more of a gas taste wouldn't you actually i tried using a pizza oven (laughs) <laughs> what? I worked in a pizza place. It was like a really slow day, and I, there was like a supermarket across the street. And on my break, I ran down there and I bought some more supplies. And I, I tried to like stick it on like a fork and put it in the pizza oven. It didn't work. Oh. But it was a fun experiment. I've thought about putting peeps, uh, like inside of a s'more. That is. Mm, I've never s'more. done that before, but I'm like, I wonder how that would taste. I f- that, Either the that, sugar would like. Ideas. Burn. Or it that's would just taste really good. It, it, it might caramelize. That's one of those mm. ideas that you think, like, you hear and you think you can't believe you've never thought of it before. Yeah, I like, peeps seem just, they seem like such a, they seem so distant from normal marshmallows. Like, I worry <laughs> that the fire would fundamentally change them. <laughs> what are you going on about? <laughs> like... <laughs> The consistency is different. All the like, there's so much extra sugar on it. I I really don't like Peeps. I'm gonna be real. I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but they're really gross. Like, you have to have one a like year. A I feel like, and then one that's a year. It. One a year. You have them at Easter, and that's it. Yeah, I, or just like springtime. I mean, same. Yeah. <laughs> Only at Easter. Like I normally have them at like family events, um, but we haven't really been able to have family events like the past year. I'm not going to buy peeps for myself. So I haven't had one in a while. <laughs> then you have that's to fair. eat all of them. I know yeah. that's a commitment. Okay. So I have a question. Um, so Katie, from, from looking on your Twitter a little bit, not like in an obsessive way or anything, just, you know, <laughs> casually viewing the Twitter. A little defensive um, there. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just had to, I just had to defend myself. Um, I noticed you tend to post a lot about Nagito from the Danganronpa series. Now, I am only slightly ashamed to admit that I've played Danganronpa, and I'm just wondering, what is it? What is it about Nagito? How, why does he appeal to you? <laughs> um. Well, what's funny is like I've always gotten like a lot of hate. Like now, now Nagito is more popular, but I've liked him since the second game came out. And, and like fan. first seeing him, I was like, oh, like he is super sweet. And then, you know, spoilers, he has the the snap and that crazy laugh and everything. <laughs> um, and total shift in personality. I've always thought that that was so interesting. And I love how his mind works. Um, just because like he's super intelligent, but he has a twisted way of viewing things. Um, and that's more on like his character and backstory and everything with his um, illnesses and like the cycle of good luck and bad luck. Um, I've just always thought that he's super just interesting. And like, I love diving into his character and his lore. Wow, I sound I'm like sold. a nerd. That was, that was honestly a way more in-depth answer than I was expecting. Like, I, yeah, yeah. I cannot be mad at all. <laughs> That, as someone who's never played the series, that was incredibly interesting to hear. <laughs> I played like an hour of the first. I think I did the first case of the first game, and it was like a rhythm game. And I'm like, I, I think I remember playing. It was like really early in the morning, and I was like super tired. And I'm just like, I can't do this. This is too hard. I just give me like an actual court case to solve. It'll be easier. And then There's, you never went back. The, the rhythm never section back. is is literally like one tiny mini game per per case. I mean, that's that's not most of the game. <laughs> <laughs> i mean like it's it's like kind of embarrassing because like a lot of my my friends and probably like my twitter followers are like man like they post a lot about nagito <laughs> and i'm like mm. <laughs> it's okay you can shame me i i don't i don't think i'm going to shame you it's it's more just confusion for me <laughs> you don't think i mean you just gonna debate upon it later He's my favorite character out of the whole mm-hmm. Dongarampa series. Like, I just bought um, a figure, like, the, the 10th anniversary figure of him recently, too. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> um, and it was his birthday <laughs> recently, so that's probably why there was more Nagito, because his birthday was on uh, April 28th. Mm. I was like, oh, Nagito's on my timeline. Let me read <laughs> <this."> <laughs> 
I think I know I mean, someone. It's, com it's commendable to go against the grain to be outspoken about a character you like. So oh, Will's birthday is April twenty eighth. To... That's the person I know whose birthday yeah, is that. That's, that's also my birthday. I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't know if I should say that. <laughs> um... Happy late birthday! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Will doesn't deserve a birthday. Rude. First of all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I feel like I'm the the type of person that like gets attached to like very specific mm -hmm. characters. So then, I like, totally I wanna, feel that honestly. I want to post about them a lot. Like I've been playing um, Genshin Impact a lot, and I'm like, oh, Kaya, he's my favorite. So now, like, not really on Twitter, but on my Facebook, I'm like, Kaya. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I don't know. You gotta have one account for game. each. <laughs> um. So. You know, other than other than Highway Blossoms and Danganronpa, and I assume visual novels, uh, what kind of games, if any, do you usually play? Um, I'm kind of like all over the place because I like puzzle games, and then like I like RPGs, I like horror, um, I like life simulation. Um, I don't think there's really a genre that I like dislike. Maybe like app games are probably mm. the only ones I really don't play. Mm. Um, I want to play the new Resident Evil game a lot. It looks really good. <laughs> I've seen a lot about that. Do you, yeah. do you have a favorite game? Um, probably Dongarampa. That's fair. That's fair. And then what now, if... like Genshin Impact, because I've been playing it nonstop. What kind yeah, of I've game heard, is heard Genshin a lot about Impact that. again? It's like a gotcha game. Oh, right, right, it's right, like, right. It's got RPG elements. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it like Breath of the Wild, but more RPG and more mobile and kind of like an MMO, but it's not actually multiplayer? That's what it's Kevin has said. <laughs> it's multiplayer in um, in a sense, because like, you can play with other people. It's just like you can't do main story quests or anything. Okay. It always confused oh. me because I, I joined it. I fully expected it to be an MMO and I got like a couple hours in it. I'm like, am I out of the tutorial? Like, can I play with people? <laughs> And then I was talking to someone, and they're like, you know, it's not an MMO, right? And I'm like, what? Because the game feels like it's so built around being an MMO, and it's yeah, it's just, it freaked me out. Huh. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm remember. scared of Genshin Impact. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's a question. In Highway Blossom's next exit, um, Amber and Marina visit the Rainforest Cafe, uh, which is uh, totally, I mean... I don't know if I'm speaking for everyone here, but this totally felt kind of weird and out of place for this just being like an actual real life restaurant uh, being visited. Have you ever been to the Rainforest Cafe? No, I've always been like outside of the Rainforest um, cafes. Like I remember one time I was having heat stroke and my mom ran into the Rainforest Cafe to get me a drink. Oh no. Um, and I was just sitting out in the heat like... <laughs> not doing well um and then there's actually a rainforest cafe pretty close huh. to me like inside of a mall and i pass by it and i'm like i have to go there like once covid <laughs> has calmed down i need to go to the rainforest cafe because i've never been and i i like look at it and get confused because i'm like it's like a gift shop but also it's a <laughs> restaurant and there's like an aquarium in there i'm like what is that <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's an incre like I've never been to one either, and I've always been incredibly confused by it. I I didn't re like until we played Highway Blossoms. I didn't realize that it actually like rained in there. Is that like that's <laughs> it doesn't like rain rain? It doesn't get you wet. <laughs> what does it do? What it, <laughs> it makes like sound effects? I'm pretty sure. Oh okay, yeah. and, like lightning flashes maybe sometimes yeah. if you're at an extra fancy place. Because mm. yeah, there's never been one near me. Oh. <laughs> I actually have been. I there's one near Niagara Falls when I was a kid. Um, we visited and we we went to the Rainforest Cafe. Wait, Nick is lagging. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, but I am like I don't know if if the Rainforest Cafe was a was like an advertisement. If if maybe the Rainforest Cafe paid big bucks to be featured in Highway Blossoms, but I have to say it worked because I kind of do want to visit now. I mean, I. I I don't know why, like, the, the Rainforest Cafe was picked. I mean, like, it is a restaurant that, like, Marina would like just because she has that kind of 
personality. And I mean, like, even, you know, when I look into the Rainforest Cafe, I'm like incredibly curious and I'm like, I want to go in, but I'm like, but not by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Table for one at the Rainforest Cafe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think of of all of the restaurants that you could go to alone, that would be one one of the worst. One Chuck of the e. one of the most sad. Chuck E. Cheese is not a restaurant. It's an entertainment center. I mean, in Highway <laughs> Blossoms, um, as well, like they go to Denny's. Like that's the the breakfast place that they go Wait, to. Wait, that was Denny's. The it's one. Denny's. Oh my was goodness. That one in Las Vegas. Um. Yeah. Like they don't say, but it's Denny's. <laughs> gotcha. So 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 like canonically, so like we can oh. write this on the wiki and everything that that was Denny's. Yeah, it's a lore okay. revelation. <laughs> this is wild because I have something that it reminded of of like Denny's. I remember. I have been to that Denny's in real life. Well, oh yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a couple years ago, my family took a trip out there, and we visited Las Vegas, and we ate at that Denny's. <laughs> yeah, we gotta add it to the Highway Blossoms trip. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps Amber and Marina were there while you were there. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, this is actually a really similar topic. Um. And I don't, I'm honestly not 100% sure about this. So the, um, the music festival at the end of the game, right, was supposed to be Coachella, right? I I think that's correct. I don't want to say 100%. I'm going to say 100%. I I want to say yes, but don't necessarily quote me on it. Because I think I can quote you on it. Your voice is in the game, and you call it Coachella. <laughs> in the original version of the game, it was Coachella, but then in an update, I think they changed it. Are we oh, sure really? about that, though? Or like someone I... on Reddit said it? I believe that person on Reddit. <laughs> wait, wait. This was just from Reddit. I thought this was from us playing the game. <laughs> well, okay, I remember us mentioning it when we played the game, but I did see someone on Reddit make a comparison of both game or both versions of the game. Huh? Because supposedly, um. It was called, be, because I remember the like when we played it. We played it um before the update that removed Jumbo, which we might get into later. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I remember us calling it Coachella pretty confidently. So it it feels like it feels like yeah. It, it, I guess they did. Maybe they did say Coachella, you know. But then uh, when we replayed it, it it didn't call it out by name, and we were like, oh, hmm, weird. Guess it just misremembered, but. Is there, like, a conspiracy here to get rid of Coachella? <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure about it. Maybe there was, like, some issues um, regarding that. Because, like, we did talk about um, in Next Exit, um, I say something, like, about Cheetos. Um, mm, yeah. But I also recorded, like, an ultimate or a, a, a different, like, an alternate line about, like, uh cheesy poofs or, or something like that and it was like just in case if anything so maybe there's been problems in the past but i'm not entirely sure like i oh, can't say that's really interesting actually because we definitely like took note of that when that happened we were we were, a couple of us were like we played it like together so we took note of it when they said i remember being so cheetos. excited when they referenced the flaming hot cheetos or whatever it was like a specific yeah. kind of cheeto yeah that they i think mentioned, it was hot cheetos. I thought that was so funny yes yeah, the hot cheetos <laughs> I love hot Cheetos. I could eat them all day. They're so good. So, I mean, like, maybe there's been, like, legal trouble, but I'm not, yeah. like, on the, the dev team. And I, like, <laughs> the I, I haven't, I haven't, like, <laughs> asked about it. I mean, I could, but I'm just, like, it slipped my mind about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I don't, I mean, but can you get sued by Coachella? Is I guess they're, but... I guess it, you know, there must be some organization yeah, that runs it. it. Maybe. Yeah, it's, it, it, I, I would be very surprised if it was just a bunch of bands deciding to come <laughs> together and play music. I don't know, I just, I just feel like it would be weird to be sued by Coachella specifically, you know? Of yeah, all of yes. the brands that were featured in that, in that game to get a season desist from Coachella, you get an email from Mr. Coachella himself. <laughs> But the, okay, but <laughs> theoretically, if you were, Katie, if you were to go to a Coachella-like event, whether or not it was Coachella, um, what kind of like bands or music would you um, gravitate towards? Like, what kind of music do you listen to um, regularly? So, I mean, like, I 
listening to music is kind of complicated because I usually have like a playlist on my phone that mm. I'll just listen to. Um, and it's kind of all over the place where it'll be like punk or rock or, you know, like classical. It's just like literally all over. And I've, I've never really been to like a proper music festival i've been to the ones like that are you know local town by the river and everything but i've mm -hmm. never been to a big music festival so i think i'd kind of like wander around and just kind of sit and listen um because i i really wouldn't know what to expect and i'd you know look at the list and see the band names and go mm, i don't know any of these <laughs> no, i feel that <laughs> yeah absolutely unless there was big time rush on the list yeah it... i'd gravitate right towards there <laughs> So I'd probably walk around, like, getting the overpriced but very tasty snacks and then, like, just kind of sitting into the different shows. Yeah. In in my limited uh, music festival experience, you have described almost exactly what I did. So that's a I don't, I mean, very reasonable thing to do. I don't know how you could go to most music festivals and like expect to know the bands you know i feel like that's kind of that's just true, what actually. happens they look fun mm. though that's fair mm. they do look fun i would enjoy going to a music festival yeah i don't know a lot about them i don't either it's like a big festival but like there's generally music happening somewhere <laughs> wow <laughs> thank okay. you Nick. you're welcome really cleared it up i wasn't help. sure what it meant until you said that yeah Oh, wait a minute. Do you guys hear that noise? <laughs> you know what that noise means. It means it's time for the bonus round. What? We're putting 30 seconds on the clock, and Katie has to answer as many questions as they possibly can. You all knew about this, right? I explained this. this no, is yeah. That happened. We were totally warned about this beforehand. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're not the ones answering the questions, so we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say... The first question, the clock will start then. I don't know how many questions we're going to be able to get there. Honestly, I might not have written enough questions. Um, so, Katie, what is your favorite color? Uh, blue. Sky blue, specifically. Okay, what is your greatest irrational fear? The dark. What is your greatest rational fear? Being lonely. <laughs> team Godzilla or Team Kong? Uh, Godzilla. Uh, what type of cheese is best? Mozzarella. Mm. Okay, who's your favorite Power Ranger? Green. Do you have any pets? <laughs> I have a dog. Her name is May. Okay, that's 30 seconds. Me. Perfect. That was great. Good job. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger? I'm very impressed. Yeah, we um uh, we we should have we should have done that like family feud style, you know, where like we 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 say afterwards like how many people answered that same answer. <laughs> Wait, Luke, I have a question about that Power Ranger question. Mm hmm Was that inspired by that argument that we were having earlier? Which argument? We were having an argument earlier? I remember all of us were like, "Who? which is, like, the most what? popular or, like, recognizable Power Ranger? And everyone said I, red, but I'm like, it's probably green, right? This, this, yeah, this didn't <laughs> happen I... on this episode. <laughs> yeah, this was not <laughs> related to what uh, happening right now. <laughs> no, I, I just, I, I don't know, I mean... It, it might have it might have been in my head because to be honest I've never seen Power Rangers I don't really know anything about Power Rangers um, for some reason that just seemed to me like a good like a like a good quick question to ask you know you don't really have to think about it too hard yeah it it is interesting to note that you said your favorite color is blue but you said your favorite Power Ranger is green and yeah <laughs> that, that it, just, it shows a lot of you know there are characters behind the suit color about, right. <laughs> It's kind of like Gatorade flavors, where you don't know how to describe them other than the color. <laughs> Wait, hold on. This is a revelation. You're completely cutting out, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, so we. Happy enough about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we we talked about this. We it got brought up earlier, but um, there was a scene in earlier versions of Highway Blossoms where. Um, Amber and Marina go to a rest stop and they encounter a mysterious man, and by mysterious I mean creepy, named Jumbo. Um, and Jumbo was removed from later versions of the game. Now, in your, in your head canon, or maybe just like the real canon canon, did they still encounter Jumbo? Or 
does the removal mean that Jumbo is no longer canon? Is he no longer part of the lore? I mean, like, I feel like they still um, met him, and I'm not entirely sure if Jumbo is still available, like, in the the 18-plus patch. Uh, Because someone had to tell me that Jumbo was removed, and I was like, really? But, I mean, now that I think of the scene, it is very uh, creepy Mm. and weird, and... (laughs) I mean, Jumbo gives me the chills. Like, <laughs> I yeah, think, I... um, he's uh, the scene uh, isn't there even if you have the eighteen plus patch installed. But in the like extras of the game, you can yeah. There's just like a legacy content section oh, where they have like a uh, goofball mode as well <laughs> as the Jumbo scene. Am I wrong in remembering that like even after they patched him out, uh, they still mentioned jumbo clones? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, the at the Denny's, they mentioned oh, that yeah, everyone correct. at the bar looked like a jumbo clone. So I Which... guess that might make it canon then. <laughs> I was, you're not making anything canon, Will. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the fact that they said it. Will yeah. decides yeah. the canon. <laughs> I say it's still um, canon, just because like it's it isn't necessarily. Uh, like, necessary in the story, just because mm. he's just a creeper on the side of the road, he's not really that important and everything, but, I mean, it's also important in the sense that it's like, yeah, there are people out there that are like mm-hmm. that. Well, yeah. Personally, I think it's very important to Amber's character, because we need to know why she doesn't like rest stops. Like, yeah, Rachel, I wasn't so sure, like, why are rest stops so bad? And then we see Jumbo, it's like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> I also really enjoyed uh, recording for that scene where she's doing that fake happy, like, oh, no, everything's fine, ah, type of voice. Let's flash the tires. Golly, yeah. mister. You <laughs> have your own set of wheels. I'm like, Amber. <laughs> I definitely remember that part. So it was, it was funny, but also it's it's terrifying. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I've met people like Jumbo in real life, and it's in that situation, you you do fall into that personality of, uh, yeah, everything's okay. I'm not totally freaking out right now. Yeah. It's fine. It's really frustrating that these interactions are, like, happen so commonly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're really saying a lot about our society, Will. <laughs> um, so here's, here's a good question, because we brought up playing Highway Blossoms. Um, when you play the game, do you... Uh, because you can you can like set the volume of each um each character's voice individually. Do you turn off Amber's voice, or do you no. listen to yourself to your recorded self? I listen to my recorded self. That's int- honestly, I feel like I could never do that. I feel like I would. I just hate the sound of my voice so much that I would never be able to play it. Like that's that. why you're not a voice actor, Luke. So, Aww. well, actually, I feel like a lot of voice actors, like, in the beginning, they feel that way, too, about hearing their own voice and going, oh, like, I sound awful. And, like, even I used to be like that in the beginning where I was like, I can't I can't listen to my own auditions because I hate the sound of my own voice. Um, and that's just something that you have to overcome. Um, and it does take time. Um, but I think, like, the human body is specifically, like set to where you hate your own voice because <laughs> it, se- it seems like a very common thing i really haven't met anybody that's like oh you know i love the sound of my own voice why were it's, we made that way i decided yeah, that we should hate our that's kind of wild to think about because like there's there was in all of evolution there was no situation where you would hear your own voice until like, that's, now well, that's so weird uh, hear your own I voice like recorded I feel like you're just used to well, hearing your own voice yeah. from your own body, and then it's yeah. just kind of weird and off-putting. To sounds it sounds almost like you, but not how you're used to. Mm. Yeah, I feel different. like that's just it. It's like Uncanny Valley. Yeah. What's funny too is when I played um, Highway Blossoms and Next Exit, like when Amber would talk, I would talk too with the lines. <laughs> <laughs> See, the first time we played Highway Blossoms, we didn't even use the voices at all because we said, oh, it would be funnier if um, if we just did the voices. And it took a really long time to play it that way because we were really <laughs> slow with reading everything. Yeah. Um, but I was Amber's inner monologue and uh, our friend Dan from the podcast was 
um, Amber's outer dialogue. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, yeah. He didn't even try, really. Well, he tried his best, all right? He, he wouldn't make it in the business. I, I at, got some, to... at some point, we started actually using the voices, and we realized, like, oh, we're missing out on a lot here. Yeah, no, like, True. the deliveries Aww. make everything way better. Better than Absolutely. Dan's deliveries, at least. Although, yeah. I did get to very enthusiastically read the treasure maps. That was kind of fun. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, Something and... that's funny is you mentioned the, the inner monologue for Amber. Um, and Freddie Hines, the voice of Joseph, uh, has joked with me that the inner monologue of Amber sounds like Kronk from in- <laughs> the Emperor's New Group. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, it's canon. It's canon. <laughs> oh, wait, that's so good. <laughs> oh. I if like next time I replay this game, I'm definitely gonna be thinking of that the whole time. <laughs> I, I, wonder, sure. I wonder what it would take for to get Patrick Warburton to do a fan dub of <laughs> Amber's inner monologue. So much that money. Be... <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's a fan dub, then they must already be a fan. They might want to do it for free. All we That's have to do true. is all we have to do is get Patrick Warburton to become a fan of Highway Blossoms. <laughs> I feel like That's a pretty easy task. Yeah. We can do it. We can do it. And so, who has Patrick Warburton's contact information? <laughs> Not me. I haven't. I haven't texted him in a while. Um, so I don't yeah, know how long. It'll take him to respond, but I yeah. can reach out. We haven't really talked since high school, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, speaking of which, um, Katie, are there any uh, like voice actors or um, voice performances that you like? idolize or look up to in particular um that's kind of like a difficult answer because i used to Mm -hmm. but not so much um anymore i mean like there's there's definitely like voice actors that i respect um not necessarily like look up to because i mean i i have that mindset now of you know oh these are you know people that Mm -hmm. you know they voice these characters but they're still people so i don't really put like others on a on a pedestal anymore um but like uh like i'm still fans of them and i still like really like them um uh, like you know bryce pappenbrook who voices <laughs> nagito uh, <laughs> every single protagonist from most dubbed anime yeah, I mean, but he's talented. Uh, Jason Liebrich, who voices Dobby in My Hero, I like a lot. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, like, they're, it's more like people that I look up to, they're not necessarily voice actors. They're, they do, like, things in entertainment, but not voice acting specifically. Like, okay, yeah, that's a really interesting answer. One of my idols is Jenna Marbles uh, from mm-hmm. YouTube. Mm-hmm. And she's not on YouTube anymore, and I'm I'm very sad about it because I missed her. But she's taking care of herself, so yeah, good on her. But she's like the kind yeah. kind of person that I would aspire to be like. So I adore her. That's fair. I think that's a good answer. Completely different question. Who do you think would win in a fight, Amber or Marina? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're good at different things. I mean, Amber won in the race. Against, uh, oh, you said Marina, not Mariah. <laughs> Mm-mm. I was thinking about Mariah. Yeah, if we went through, like, the Highway Blossoms uh, Gauntlet, how far could Amber get? <laughs> the Highway see. Blossoms Gauntlet. <laughs> I don't think that they would ever fight. Like, they would never have a fist fight. I feel like they would have a playful mm-hmm. competition. Um, This is like a who would win, like, they're both bloodlusted scenario <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> Marina um mm. maybe if someone like stole her candy or, or something <laughs> or if like they gave away like all of the miners treasure hmm. true <laughs> i don't think that they would fight each other to the death over the the gold <laughs> that they found <laughs> i think honestly like marina would win mm. just because she's more logical when she's mad whereas amber's more hot-headed mm. And like will blow up, and she doesn't really think, <laughs> and will just say things, and then it's like, oh no, I shouldn't have said that. 
Because yeah. she does it all the time, and she's trying to be better. <laughs> um, but that's that's just why I think like Marina would win, just because mm. like she like brings up really good points when she's a, gen- mad. a good general. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually yeah, really the thing to point towards it because I would have just thought that Amber would have just won because like she's way more resourceful. I was just Probably. thinking my purely physical ability, but I, I like that approach better. <laughs> purely oh, true, ability. true. Um, yeah, when they were climbing ability. up the mountain, uh, what was it like? Angels Landing. Yeah, actually, no, they were pretty equal, I think. Um, there was that time where Amber slipped though. Mm. Like almost clumsy. Fell. Dexterity is important in a yeah. bloodlust fight. <laughs> yeah, Marina would definitely use that to her advantage. Also, uh, Marina pushed Amber accidentally into a cactus. Oh, true. oh <laughs> that's true. Pivot. That's so true. You know, you've so, convinced me. I was on. I was on Team Amber before this, but I, I think Marina would win. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. The, the total amount of damage, physical damage done by Marina is definitely more. So that is a good point. <laughs> also, emotional damage. Yeah. I, f- well, I feel like there was the one line that is probably the most, I don't want to say iconic, the most memorable, when uh, Marina's yelling about stop stop treating her like a child. I feel like that's the loudest line in the game, therefore, loud equals win, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, she had a lot of emotional stuff put on her before sending was, it right back. There was a lot going on. <laughs> and even that continues. Between them. In yeah. next exit, where Amber's still mm-hmm. kind of treating her like a child and kind of tiptoeing around her and is like, I don't really know how to act. Mm. Like yeah, Amber, it's like an just, awkward spot. Just be yourself, girl. Mm-hmm. I really liked how in next exit we could see like the different perspectives. Um, Me too. Because when we were looking at Amber's perspective, it was just like, man, life's awesome. It's great. And Mariah's just like, oh, how do I, how do I tell her? You mean <laughs> like, Marina? Marina, yeah. Yeah. Marina, Marina, I'm right in my bed. It's happening all over the place. I'm, I'm going to lose my, my number one <laughs> fan card. I mean, they really made those names super similar just to be confusing, to be honest. And they mentioned it in the, the DLC. Yeah, well, they, they, they mentioned it in the they mentioned in the base game. Amber says how um they're both nicknamed Mare. Oh, I yeah. feel like that was yep. the intention. I feel like that was the reason why they have similar mm-hmm. names. Or that was just an afterthought. And they're just like, we have to mention it. Well, maybe, but I personally feel like it was for that reason. That's my it feeling. Been. My hypothesis. Fan theory. <laughs> my fan I theory. Love, I love Mariah and the trio. They're great. Yeah. They really stepped up their, like, criminalness in the, the DLC. In original, <laughs> they're just like, oh, yeah, they're just, like, dying and dashing, you know? And then literally... Like the police are chasing them, <laughs> the and it's like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I, when when we played through Next Exit, um, the Amber and Marina plotline was like, it was uh, like like it was all right. You know, I feel like there were some really good moments to it, but um, a lot of it was kind of eh. But the plotline with Tess and Joe was insane. Was like mm. way more than any of us were expecting, and I feel like that was honestly the most engaging part of the DLC. I mean, I have to um, agree because, like, I had no idea that any of that was coming. Like, it even surprised me. Mm. Um, and just with Joe's backstory and like with the necklace and everything, I was like crying. I was ugly crying. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh. Um. Not to say that I didn't, you know, I didn't enjoy the the Amber and Marina storyline. It was just like that was it was really nice to touch more with the the trio because I adore them and I want what's best for them. So it was just a really nice moment to get a look into their heads. Yeah, I definitely felt like that was sort of like an unresolved plot line from the first part of the from the non DLC part. Basically, so what was like yeah. what was, was the, like half resolved? Yeah, yeah. What was the recording process like? Were, do you would you basically just like like were were you did you interact with the other voice actors or is it all just kind of like remote? Uh, it's just us by ourselves. So I didn't hear any of the recordings or anything until I played the game. Oh, mm-hmm. oh wow! Hmm. 
And I only read the the scenes with Amber. Like I didn't look at any of the other scenes, so I had no clue any of the the test stuff, anything that was happening when Amber wasn't there. Like had no clue. Are we allowed to ask like when these recording sessions occurred? Like I I feel like it'd be interesting to get like a time a time scale here. Um, I'm trying to think of when. <laughs> do I even remember? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think they do. Um, it's okay. I know, I know it was it was hot when I recorded, so it was probably like during one of the summers or like spring. It's hard to tell in Texas. Time mm. has been weird <laughs> since COVID. I think, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think this was the visual novel was a thing before the voice acting, and I think the remastered version had the voice acting in 2017. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. Number one fan, Kevin, coming in here. <laughs> yeah, with the with the first with the first Highway Blossoms, I was thinking more at next exit. Um, with the first Highway Blossoms, the visual novel existed first, and then voice acting was added. Um, mm-hmm. So I actually played through the entire game of Highway Blossoms before I even was cast as Amber. Mm, oh, that's really okay. cool, actually. So is it like yeah. fan to working on it or? Um, I mean, like, I had known that I was going to be, like, auditioning for it. Um, so I was kind of like, let me, let me see the characters. Let me get, like, a taste for them. Um, and then I fell in love with the story and I was like, oh, I'd love to be a part of this. I would love Mm -hmm. to be one, any one of these characters. Um, and then I auditioned for Amber and I was like, "I, I don't think I can do marina as much as i would love to try just because it's kind of out of my vocal range um and amber was the only one that i read for and i got cast as her that's sweet that's awesome yeah in in my experience voice acting marina when we play um it is a very difficult (laughs) oh yeah uh, role to roll to roll to uh get into didn't didn't you do a goblin voice Yeah, it was like a weird, like gremlin voice. No, that no, no, that's of... not the one I did for. Oh, Marina. that was a different. Yeah, <laughs> we played. No, I remember Nick actually had a pretty night. convincing voice. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I did. <laughs> if I do say so myself, my voice was decent for that. <laughs> but I mean, like, I feel like with recording uh, "High Blossoms" and "High Blossoms mm-hmm. Next Exit," there were like problems with both um for next exit there were a lot of technical issues and i had to replace some of my rec- uh, equipment just mm. because it was going on the fritz and i apologize like a million times i'm like i'm so sorry like <laughs> my audio box is not working anymore i need a new one it's going to take a couple of days um and then with the first highway blossoms uh i was sick like mm. um kind of like when we started recording and then like midway through and then i was in the process of moving too so it was like kind of awkward uh i remember i woke up one morning because i was going to do a very early session at like 6 a.m and i got so sick Mm. i was like no i can (laughs) still record (laughs) and my director and the dev were both like no go to bed (laughs) <laughs> okay because i was gonna ask if some of those lines got in the game but oh no they didn't want me recording when i was like super super sick mm. fair but um, it all worked out <laughs> what would you say was your favorite like scene in either the game or the dlc um in the first highway blossoms i love when they're at the grand canyon and looking at the sunset it's very, very sweet, and then they get interrupted. Um, one of my favorite lines from Joseph is when he's like, oh, how was the sunset? And Amber's just like, oh, it's okay. He's <laughs> disappointed. Yeah. Joe was a total bro. He was a bro. I want him and Amber to be, like, best friends, because they get along so well. They had so little I interaction. Agree. No, no, I, I totally think personality-wise that, yeah. that they would go. Yeah, I know, I, I agree. I'm just sad that they didn't have that much interactions. It was like a couple times. Yeah. Maybe the I next game, they'll, it'll just be Amber and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy cop. And then, and then Marina and Mariah will have, will have their own subplot. What about that? Would be wild. <laughs> Tess has a solo adventure. Tess should go to school and like, uh, 
Yeah, no more adventures. Tess should go to therapy, if we're being honest. That's yeah, also that. True. That is true. Um, she, she should have an adventure with a therapist. And then from next exit, I would probably say um, the moment, like, it's... <laughs> It was just really fun to record. It's not like a moment that I like super enjoy, but like when when Amber's being all flirty with with Cassie and Marina gets mad, and then Amber's like, "Oh, like what's wrong?" Like, <laughs> and is kind of acting like really terrible and yeah. doesn't realize it. But like it was super fun to record for. It. So I'm like, I really like that line, but it's also it made me very sad. <laughs> It was incredibly frustrating to experience. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like, actually kind of funny seeing um, Marina just like call out Amber like every single time anything happened, and it was really oh, funny. That's great. Mm. Um, what's funny too is there were times in um, in Next Exit where like Amber was being like kind of you know terrible and i was like crying because i was like i'm so upset about it and i'm like but i can't cry because amber's not crying <laughs> amber's a rock amber has to be a rock <laughs> and i was just getting really upset <laughs> um but like a lot of the times in the game when like amber is like crying or emotional or anything like that like a lot of the time i was actually crying Mm. Uh -huh. whether it be from like stuff that was happening in my life or just like upset at the the situation and like feeling guilty even though i'm not this character <laughs> mm. yeah, actually like a standout moment for me is like a lot of the emotional scenes like i feel like the voice the voice is like really elevated what was happening where i, I couldn't imagine just reading the visual novel where it's like the voices like really hit in those emo yeah. emotional scenes it would be, it would be hard to imagine dan giving the same emotion <laughs> that <laughs> that was on display from the voice acting that was in, in, impressively it was it was just really good <laughs> good scenes <laughs> the, the sound design in general does definitely elevate um the game in the dlc which really makes you wonder what is your favorite song from the soundtrack <laughs> if you can name <laughs> because it because we <laughs> if, if you know the names I don't because know we, the... we talk about the soundtrack all the time. <laughs> I don't know the like official name from it, um, but I really love uh, Mariah's theme with the trumpets. Trio mm. one. I love Eat that it. song because it electric like, shoehorn. It's so it's so, <laughs> it's so catchy, and I'm like, it almost makes me go, man, I wish I voiced Mariah so I could have a really cool theme. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that after after this. Um, it's my homework music. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I liked, uh, I really like Eleven. I think it's called. Yeah. That one's really good. Like, but Highway Blossoms overall, like, has it has really good music. Definitely. Every, and your every time. Every time I hear Mariah's theme, I'm like, oh, that's a bop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. Listen, playing the game with music for the first time, and be like that. That was that song in particular stood out among the rest. Oh yeah, because we like not only did we turn off the voices to start, we also turned off the music, and which was a mistake. Yeah, yeah we were mistake. Just, yeah. We just we played the game. The game. I, I think the reason yeah. why we did it was just because we were taking so long because we kept getting distracted and talking about other things that the music kept like looping over and over again. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You guys want to listen to Conga Wonga for the 12th time? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yes. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's listen to Conga Wonga. The saddest song in the universe. I I feel like when something dramatic happens in real life, Echo in the <laughs> Silo should start playing. <laughs> oh, well, there was that moment um, when they, like, destroyed uh, Marina's car. And it started playing Echoes in the Silo when they found out. But when yeah. we originally played the game, we didn't have the music on. And we thought it was, like, such a funny scene. But when we had the music on, we were like, oh, wait a minute, this is dramatic, wait. <laughs> That's all, that was also, like, a really good scene to record for. Just because I got to uh, yell. And, mm. like, that was uh, a lot of fun. And that was also me, like relieving a lot of stress just being able to yell like at the top of my lungs about this car <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like what i do on the highway <laughs> I, I was what driving is... i was driving yesterday 
and uh, um, and Kevin heard me constantly yelling at people for having their high beams on or or <laughs> like so, being in the left so, lane and going too slow. Katie, what you're saying is you were paid to scream, just like yeah. <laughs> just like the frogs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You didn't know, but I was a frog all along. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that so... conversation isn't in the episode. There's no context for that. <laughs> oh, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. That's my bad. <laughs> for context, I have a frog and he screams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I so <laughs> I feel like we're um we're probably just about wrapping up right about Wait. now. Uh, we should ask about. <laughs> I'll just ask. You we just, should ask. ask. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So at one point. In the game, Amber gets a call about the RV being fixed, but she doesn't have a phone. And we were... This, what are you asking? Asked... <laughs> in next exit, or... Yeah, yeah next exit. Yeah. Hmm. We were just confused about, like, the the logistics. It's, so it's, it's when they're at the, um, like, the convention center, and we were kind of thinking, like, hypothetically, it could have been a call through the hotel that they were at, but there would be no way for the hotel staff to know to find Amber at the convention center. You know, it's not like they were in their room or anything. So how did she get that call? She just kind of says that she got a call that the RV was fixed. She just doesn't really good at guessing time. She, she probably doesn't know. Oh, the RV's probably done. I have to, like, replay and, like, read it again. Because, like, my brain is going, maybe it was Marina's phone. Because mm. Marina did have oh, a phone. Yeah. Um... And that, like, it, it could have been the hotel, but it's also been, like, a hot minute since I've played <laughs> Next Exit, so I'm, like, trying to, like, think over the details again of, like, hmm. I personally think that it was an unforgivable mistake, and I hope that somebody <laughs> got fired for that blunder. <laughs> she just has that connection with the RV. She just knew. The RV <laughs> they're like, they're okay, like twins. They fixed. can reach this mind. It's, it's it, it was calling her. The RV was calling her. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'll accept that. Canon. <laughs> Kevin, as the number one fan, gets to decide what's canon. <laughs> it's her soul vehicle. They have yeah. a bond. <laughs> yeah, you can't drive an RV like that without a psychic link, you know? Exactly. <laughs> okay, so one more question from me, at least. Um, if somebody wanted to get into voice acting, how would you recommend they do it? So getting into voice acting is, I mean, it's kind of, that's kind of a difficult an uh, question to, to answer just because like, and a lot of people say this, but um, like everyone's journey is different mm -hmm. as to getting into it. Um, like I started out as just a fan that really enjoyed, you know, entertainment acting things like that um and my friends introduced me to it and we're like hey like voice acting and we do like comic dubs and like I did music like years ago um for somebody um and that was my start and then I started going on the websites where um auditions are posted and then that eventually led to me getting added to email lists. So I get sent auditions now. Um, so, I mean, like, it's it's really just taking that step and doing the research into voice acting and also, like, relying on others. Um, just because, like, you can find, like, great opportunities through that. I mean, like, that's how I found out about... Uh, highway blossoms was because i was part of the studio that reached out to the devs and was like hey do you guys want to do voice acting and that's how i got to audition for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what was some of the previous work that you've done um i mean like i've done uh there's another visual novel that's in the works uh called lucid nine that i voice in i've done an online web comic called god complex um i've done little short animations um recently i did like an audio story and i forgot to post it on twitter <laughs> <laughs> it was nakito's birthday we understand <laughs> <laughs>
I've just kind of been um like out of the the voice acting loop in a sense. Um so I'm like I, I feel kind of bad because I'm like these people probably follow me for my voice acting stuff, and I'm also like this is also my personal Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind of wild to think about. Um, so I mean, like I, I would totally understand if people were like, I don't want to follow anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't blame you. I'm I'm so I'm still following. I'm not Absolutely. gonna stop following just because of Nagato. If I <laughs> if I use Twitter, I would. Yeah, I mean, like, mm, social media is funny like that. <laughs> mm, definitely. But, I mean, like, um, with, also with voice acting, like, it can be kind of um, difficult as well. Like, it's very hard to have it just as a, you know, full-time job and to live off of it. Um because, like, sure, I've been, you know, paid for projects and things like that. But also I have to have a, a full-time job because I'm like, I have to, you know, pay rent. And I have my dog to take care of. I have my car, things like that. And I'm like, I have to pay those bills. And if I'm not, like, booking jobs, then it's like, whoops, I'm not getting paid. <laughs> Sorry, I can't make the payments this month. I, I didn't book a gig. <laughs> Um, it's also a lot of auditioning. Like, I can't even, like, think of how many I've even done, like, in a lifetime. Probably, like, hundreds, maybe even thousands. Dang. Jeez. And, like, with, with every one that you do, like, it's not uh, a guarantee. <clears throat> um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to, like, be a downer about it, but that's just, like, the reality of the... The situation that you will do a lot of auditioning and like get attached to these characters and then you won't get the role mm. and so that's why it's like you audition for it and you forget about it so you don't get upset about it then it's mm. like it's not like you're going oh man i didn't get that character and i really wanted them you're like oh wait i auditioned for that <laughs> i don't even remember <laughs> that definitely sounds like the way to go <laughs> yeah yeah, because I mean, like, and I, I used to be like that in the past as well, where I would be like, oh, man, I really want this character and then not get it and then be upset about it. But then it's like, why should I be upset? Like, there's mm -hmm. always more characters. There's always more stuff to do. And like, I I very much enjoy voice acting. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe one day, like, I'll do it full time but at the moment I'm not and that's okay like because I still have a lot of fun uh, um like Amber is one of my favorite characters that I've ever voiced and like she'll always be so special in my heart and I'm like blah 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 hi we blossomed <laughs> <laughs> um just because you know I I connected with her and we went on a a journey or a road trip together. <laughs> it's it's a really sweet story, and I feel really blessed that I was able to be a part of it because like the people that were involved in it were great, and it was a great experience. And I'm like, if there would be more highway blossoms, I don't know if there will ever be, but like I would be so happy to come back and be Amber again. That's good to hear. I hope that there is more, honestly. Highway Blossom has confirmed, everybody. <laughs> no. I'm the number one fan, straight from the source. <laughs> All of the weird rumor sites now are going to be posting Katie Dagnan confirms Highway Blossoms too. <laughs> it would be nice, but I have no clue. Okay, yeah. um, do you guys have any more questions before we wrap up? I think I'm, I think I'm good. All right. All right, so Katie, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you. Honestly, for yeah. me. really great, really fun interview. Um, remember, yeah, if you want to email us at acubicinchofsound at gmail.com, you can. We are always up for suggestions or, or what have you.